All right, let's get started. Uh, my name is Eric Foreman, CEO of Facility Grid. Uh, I just want to start off by saying that I hope everybody is well and staying safe and taking the necessary precautions during this time. Uh, welcome to the Facility Grid webinar series. Uh, we've been doing this for the last two weeks and we'll be uh, uh, every Tuesday and Thursday for the next week. And uh, we might be adding more as um, as things permit. Um, but thank you very much for your time today and, th and thank you for, for attending. Uh, you can see the uh, webinar series every Tuesday and Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, um, April 9th, 14th, 16th, delivering value to all project stakeholders by bringing transparency to the CX process. Next Tuesday, enhancing project turnover process by streamlining CX deliverables. And the 16th, enabling commissioning work products to contribute to successful project turnover and sustainable building life cycle. And the previous ones we have on demand at our website, at the webinar directory. As an FYI, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we are doing deep dives, 45-minute sessions into Facility Grid. If you do have any interest in attending those, uh, you can contact Greg. His email is below, and his phone number is there as well. This is a 45-minute webinar. Uh, ask questions uh, as you have them using the uh, the toolkit uh, with GoToWebinar, and we will try to answer those questions as they come in. Uh, we will also save some time at the end for answering questions. We will go as long as needed. So again, thank you very much for attending, and now I'm going to hand it over to Greg Caravella, who's SVP of Sales. Greg is going to do a uh, a PowerPoint, short PowerPoint, and then hand it over to Alex Kozenitz, who is our chief product officer, who will get right into the software and uh, show you the details of what you came for. So thank you again. And Greg, it's all yours. Thank you, Eric. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you all for attending today. Uh, these are some really uh, interesting sessions that uh, we're putting on and they were a lot of them were suggested by our our customers and uh, also uh, we're trying to just uh, use some of this time because uh, some of us have uh, extra time right now because we're not on the road and it's a good time to to brush up on things and the attendance has been very good and and we thank you all for that real quick how do our customers use facility grid um, basically it's to manage any activity a lot of you are commissioning authorities and you use them for new construction at the beginning of a project bringing everything together uh, building a structure that is uh, is that can create an accountability in the entire process while also delivering reports in a timely and standard methodology so that everybody who's taking part in the commissioning activities in the commissioning process are actually taking it into consideration and um, everybody's working on the same page. With existing building commissioning, this might be the first time that you're actually going to do some commissioning and um, setting everything up for the first time. Uh, will all also provide the same kind of accountability all the way through the process and in an ongoing commissioning in an ongoing commissioning uh, scenario once you have everything in place it's much more standard and you can really see how you can just move all the way through that process of commissioning in an ongoing format uh, also using quality control using Facility Grid as a quality control tool to manage activities like factory acceptance testing, static testing, pressure testing, flushing, bus bar and cable torque testing. These are some of the uh, items that are very important to certain customers that we have, and they have to be uh, very detailed tests that have to run in a certain uh, individuals by certain trades. 
equipment startup is so important in the quality control phase because a lot of times you'll get into a situation where you may show up at a project and nothing is connected using facility grid you'll be able to set up your test you'll be able to set up all of your processes and your procedures to be able to get sign offs at different times during the uh, during the startup phase so that when you get to the site everything is there our construction customers going them training and turnover at the end of a project so as it says there facility grid is there for any any uh, process at all here's some of our customers you can see we've got a number of very large customers that use us uh, extensively to some uh, smaller regional type organizations and local organizations that use us uh, extensively also in their current business model and we also have a lot of uh, verticals that are represented by these companies everything from universities to data centers to high performance building k-12 uh, you name it we're we're in it and it's uh, uh, these companies are all running very smooth LaGuardia Airport for example we're there for the entire process so how do we deliver value overhead reduction everybody knows what the process is improvement in the quality of work everybody has a central place to go to to see what's going on and what is the status of what data integrity issues because everything is centralized everything there's no two places where data is actually uh, that it resides it all resides in the same place proactively managing the projects and pipeline when issues are discovered issues can be created they can be uh, memorialized and you can send responsible for fixing and you can monitor that in a real-time basis to see when something has been addressed sometimes a building owner may want to uh, may get an invoice from a customer from a customer from a, a contractor to be paid and you can easily come up with a report that shows all the open issues with photographs and a trail of everything going on and send that right to the building owner. And that really gives you a leg up on uh, becoming the hub of what's going on with the business owner. And realize always in a real time state of where the building is as it's going through the process of commissioning. And then in the end, when you turn it over, uh, you've turned over something that can be documented and moving forward, everybody knows the starting point when you move it into a CMMS type system or any, uh, any follow-up. We provide a standard set of reports, processes, and deliverables, so it's always the same. Training, support, uh, with when we start off, uh, you, we have a comprehensive library of on-demand courses. You go to our site, you'll see uh, our uh, our background courses, all the courses that you see here today, all of our point training that we do, product training. We have live customer uh, training sessions when somebody comes on board with us, so that. And these are recorded also for later use. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel that you can uh, go to and access any one of these uh, training sessions. Support, support's handled online. Uh, we have uh, and training resources available 24 seven. If you have a question, uh, email a question and uh, you'll get a response very quickly from our team. And we have all email support uh, 12 hours a day, five days a week. And technology, our technology is 100% web-based, available on any web-enabled device, including iPhone, Android, and Microsoft devices. We're in the field a lot of times, and there may not be any kind of an internet capability available. We run in a native form in all of those environments. And secure hosting, redundant hosting, service levels that we maintain so that you're always receiving 
a good response to anything that you send into us. Following this pro the uh, commissioning process from the beginning to end, you'll see how it's easy to set up a project. You'll be able to import your, uh, your spreadsheets uh, into our product. You'll be able to populate using other utilities. You'll see how easy it is to initiate and track the progress of the users who are in the system that you bring into the system, that you set up permissions for people to be in, that execute your checklist, your tests, the way you design them. Producing your issue status, your notification and reports, including photos, attaching photos to uh, issues reports that you send out. It's all there you're in a in the in a hub environment where you can even send notifications out as soon as you discover an issue and send it to the trade or the person responsible for making the modification we also use complementary technologies like pdf markup tools like bluebeam or i annotate where you make uh you make markups on the drawings using those tools and we populate it right into facility grid so you have that information and there's no transition of data where you have to enter it twice. Efficiency to all the stakeholders, custom reporting, your final report, assistance manual, data asset reports that are important when moving forward into a CMS, MMS type system, and life cycle management through COBE and incorporating into a CMMS program and COBE being the interface going back to the model. We cover thousands of projects today that use Facility Grid worldwide. This is a tested and true product and we're very proud of it. And we know a number of our customers are on the line today and we really thank you for your business. So now what we'd like to do just before we go, here's the uh, our native Facility Grid apps for all the iOS and Android and Microsoft devices. And this is a uh, example of that. And uh, In closing, significant overhead reduction, you reduce the data capture time, reduce time to create project status reports, it's all by the push of a button, eliminate time visiting sites that are unprepared for testing because you know the status before you go out. You eliminate the manual creation of finished product reports because they come out, they're all standard, and you can also set them up in your own custom way too, but they all print out easily. Significant improvement in work productivity. Eliminate errors for transposing data because it's only entered once. Eliminate report formatting issues because we take care of that for you. You increase the percentage of time you're spending on high value testing as opposed to finding out, making telephone calls, sending emails, waiting for something to come back so that you can get back and, uh, and pick up your, uh, your testing. Transforming static reports into dynamic living documents. And your mobile access to a project for input and access, it just helps you to get through the project quicker and more accurately. You win more business because you re reduce the expense to the clients with greater margins to you. You deliver a finished product with long-term value because you're turning over all the information that the owner will need to move forward. And you'll solidify the relationship with your uh, owner because uh, you have a real-time communication on project status at any time. At any time, you can provide a, an unaudited final report, if you like, if you wanna go that far. And you provide clients with a tool that works hand-in-hand -hand with BIM, which is very important. So, So that's, uh, I just wanted to wrap it up there and, uh, and thank you for your time today. Thank you for your time and thank you for your business. And now I'm going to turn this over to Alex Kozinets, who is the Chief Product Officer for Facility Grid. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Greg, and hello to everyone. Um, so today's presentation uh, is going to be based on um the culture in the commissioning industry okay 
Um, so we've all been involved in different types of projects, uh, different size of projects, with different deadlines, different requirements, and we've all experienced, um, or most of us have experienced issues on projects, right? And so before we talk about how to improve the business culture and commissioning projects, let's try to identify some major points of contention. Um, as you, most of you know, uh, my background is in mechanical engineering, construction administration, and in commissioning. So what I'll be talking about today is, is you know, comes from my experience, comes from experience of our clients who I talk to regularly. Um, so you may agree with most of my points, with some of my points, maybe with none of them. Uh, but I do think what I what I'll be talking about, uh, you know, is is something that is uh, you know really happens on um, a lot of projects in in our industry. So those points of contention uh, are typically have to do with um, the fact that the responsibilities of project participants in scope of work are sometimes mis misunderstood. The commissioning documents that are produced by the commissioning provider, like uh, scope of work uh, as part of the um, uh, commissioning plan or the commissioning specs, are not typically reviewed. Uh, construction schedules, a lot of times, are not detailed enough to show the actual uh, commissioning activities uh, and uh, prerequisites. So a lot of times you look at the commissioning schedule and just says at the end of the project, here's a two months uh, period where commissioning needs to be done. Also, those schedules are not updated on the status of commissioning and QC activities. A lot of times um, that information is just a hearsay, you know, from, you know, coming from uh, maybe uh, uh, installing contractors or from GC or from the project team other project team members, but not necessarily it's based on the actual status of um, of activities. And also a lot of times uh, a finger pointing uh, comes up when um, commissioning team starts getting ready for the functional testing. Okay, uh, commissioning team shows up with, uh, on, the, on the job site, uh, ready to start testing, and finds out that our equipment is not ready. Okay, uh, tests being um, failed. Um, there's a there's always a uh, uh, um, discussion on on whose whose fault it is, and so on and so forth. So, how do we how do we change that? What can uh, what can a commissioning team do to minimize uh, the you know the frustration? misunderstanding and uh, uh, make sure that everyone is ex uh, aware of the expectations. So I think the two major um, uh, items that can be can be done are uh, bringing transparency into the commissioning process and the other one is encouraging collaboration between stakeholders. Okay, um, you know, everyone talks about these items, right? A lot of times when commissioning uh, providers put together their proposals, they always identify these two items um, that, you know, they, they will deliver to the project. So let's let's see how you can actually deliver them using a commissioning software. <clears throat> so I think uh, the, the um, where we wanna concentrate is to make sure that the commissioning team is always uh, includes um, is always provided information on um, the that scope of work. Okay, so number one is the scope of work is identified. Everyone is every uh, project team member is aware of what uh, uh, they require effort is. Also, uh, everyone is. Um, aware of where the project is at at any point of time. Everyone knows how to access and where the uh, project documentation is located. So at any point of time, if somebody needs to uh, find uh, the commissioning plan, uh, the updated commissioning plan or um, um, any meeting notes, for example, 
that information needs to be very easily accessible to anyone uh, who is uh, involved in the project. Uh, and also communication between project stakeholders ahead of the um, uh, any functional testing and the readiness for the testing. Okay. So let's let's uh, now switch to the software uh, and let's start by looking at uh, transparency. Okay. So uh, like I said, the bringing transparency to the project participants is one of the major ways to um, you know bridge the gap and uh, minimize um, any contentions that occur uh, on the uh, on the projects. So. What, what does Facility Grid do in terms of uh, you know, delivering that transparency? Well, first of all, Facility Grid is a task-based process software. That means is uh, when you create projects in Facility Grid, you tailor Facility Grid specifically to the scope of your project. So regardless of whether it's a new building commissioning uh, project or a new construction with existing building commissioning, uh, whether it's ongoing commissioning project, regardless of the size of the type, uh, uh, once uh, the uh, team identifies the scope of work, Facility Grid allows uh, allows to be um, tailored specific to that scope. So we have uh, uh, tasks that pretty much describe each uh, scope item. Okay, so for example, if the commissioning team is involved in, uh, for example, lead enhanced commissioning process, that part of their scope is to uh, review equipment submittals. Okay, so the question sometimes comes up, okay, what equipment submittals are needed need to be reviewed? Does the commissioning team, is commissioning team looking to review every submittal that comes in? Do they only review, uh, you know, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing submittals? Do they look at the file arm and so on and so forth? So uh, that can be uh, can get confusing, and uh, sometimes the uh, commissioning team can miss out on some of the submittals, or maybe they're getting submittals because uh, the construction team or the engineer record thinks that the commissioning team will be looking at those submittals, and the commissioning team things that that's not part of their scope. So then the uh, engineer of record is waiting for those comments from the uh, uh, commissioning team and they're not getting them. And the reason is because it's commissioning engineer thinks it's not part of their scope. Anyway, so communicating the uh, project, uh, uh, the scope of uh, services is very important. Right, so you can see right here in my in this example, what I've done was I've actually taken a scope of work for a project, and I've documented uh, as placeholders every equipment submittal that I plan on reviewing. So any member of the project team can log into Facility Grid, can go to the equipment submittals task, and see uh, here are the uh, uh, submittals that are part of my scope. This is the this is what I plan on reviewing, and as I perform those activities, I document my uh, comments, and I also attach um, the documents um, to the uh, to the subtasks. Okay, and this occurs. This can occur for every activity. So, for example, if I am uh, uh, involved in re uh, reviewing design documents, and the question would come up. Okay, well, how many reviews am I supposed to, uh, am I as part of my scope? Do I do two reviews? Do I do three reviews or just one? So again, what I can do is as part of my um, outline of the project, I could utilize the tasks to describe uh, what m part of my scope is, right? So this is what I'm going to state. I'm going to say that as part of uh, this process, I'm going to perform a design development review the design development phase, maybe review uh, 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 the schematic design, and then do 100% CDs, okay? Again, I'm going to document everything in one location. And so at any at any uh, uh, time, any project participant can go into Facility Grid 
and navigate to any of these activities and see exactly what's in the scope, exactly, uh, uh, um, and the status of those activities, right? Uh, because it's not only important to know what's expected out of me, but it's also ex important to know what has already been done. Now, <clears throat> as you know, facility grid tracks process and status of every activity, not just not just tests, not just checklists, not just issues, but also pr uh, uh, progress of every activity that you document as tasks. And facility grid provides you with the overview page that you can uh, navigate to and get the access to all that data. So as I perform these activities, uh, the tasks page gets automatically updated and provide this up-to-date status. So any project participant can log in and get an ex exact uh, uh, um, data on where each activity is at. So if I go to that develop design uh, documents review task, okay, I am 33% done. I've performed one review. Uh, if I uh, have uh, let's say uh, as part of the uh, construction phase, I have to, uh, I'm required to attend 26 commissioning meetings, and I've attended one, so I can track that as well. So uh, the the information that resides on facility grid is accessible by every project team member. It is tracked in terms of the status. It is. Uh, uh, accessible on pretty much any mobile device in addition to the cloud so if you're on the job site and you need to get hold of the uh you know the latest design documents or the latest uh commissioning plan or whatever all that information can be accessed on the cloud and on a mobile device now in addition to the uh, uh status of the tasks part of the transparency is uh, to be able to uh, report on the status of the uh, testing activities. So these are uh, checklists and functional tests. Uh, we not only report on the um, status of activities, we also report on the um, progress of activities. So if I was to uh, simply suggest that, uh, you know, a week ago we had, um, so many open, uh, not uh, um, uh, so many checklists that have not been fully completed, and even though somebody may have been working for an entire week on completing checklists, but you know no additional checklists have been 100% completed, my reporting to the team will be to state that the number of uh, not completed checklists hasn't changed. Okay, we had, let's say. 200 uh, checklists that have not been completed last week, 200 that have, uh, checklists that, that are not completed this week either, okay? Even though the team may have been working on, uh, on those checklists. So if I'm reporting on a status, that is not a, a true uh, transparency, right? Because I am not giving the real information. So the real information is to also show progress because as part of the progress, I am not just uh, uh, sharing information on the status of the checklist, but the progress of completing of those checklists. And I'm showing this on a weekly basis, or I can show it on a monthly basis. And the same happens with the functional tests, because that information is also can be reported, not just uh, uh, related to status of the functional tests, but also on their progress. And we have tons of information, tons of charts that report status and progress of issues as well. It is obviously very important to know the status uh, of each issue. It is also important to understand, you know, what are the main, uh, uh, main major issues on the project. Uh, again, the progress of how the issues being addressed. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have some additional charts, for example, just to show the disciplines with most issues or assets with most issues. And again, this is uh, such that uh, at any point of time, any project participant can open the software and understand exactly, you know, how, you know what they are, uh, what their, um, uh, uh, you know, status of their activities is, 
uh, where they, they, their team is at with uh, addressing issues and so on and so forth. And in addition to uh, these uh, uh, you know, charts being shown on this overview page, uh, as most of you probably know, on our overview page, on our main page, which we call our dashboard, uh, we can get the information uh, across the, uh, uh, the projects that you're currently working on. Right? So without going even into the project, you can simply open Facility Grid on the dashboard page and get the data available for you. So let's actually also look at some additional uh, ways to bring transparency. So uh, if I go to the, uh, uh, the page that displays all the checklists, so we report on the status of each checklist uh, and uh, in terms of the um, percent completion of the questions, uh, we also show the uh, percent completion, uh, um, uh, you know, of the uh, not the not percent completion, but the number of checklist questions that uh, the total per each checklist, uh, also the ones that are uh, have been passed, the one that failed, and so on and so forth. But when you look at this page you do not get a full picture, right? Because you don't know uh, out of the uh, incomplete uh, uh, checklist questions, you know, who is responsible for them, right? So if I have uh, this air cleaning unit number two, for example, I'm reporting that there's 61 incomplete questions. There is real no transparency because you don't know whether it's a single uh, subcontractor hasn't finished checklist or it's, uh, you know, several haven't finished. So the additional information that we provide is the detailed view. So if you navigate to the detailed view for the checklist, now you can uh, see exactly uh, uh, where each uh, participant is at in terms of completing a particular checklist. So now when I switch to the detailed view, now I can see, okay, so out of the 61 incomplete questions, mechanic contractor has 39 of them, controls contractor has 14 and so on and so forth. So I can go as deep as needed to get all the data so that uh, there is no questions being asked, you know, who is responsible, who still has uh, to do some work on completing a uh, checklist. Also, uh, in terms of the uh, functional test completion. So a lot of times, on the uh, on project, the construction team would approach the commissioning team and would say, uh, would ask questions in terms of, um, uh, you know, what happens, or, you know, how much time uh, do uh, do they need to allocate for the functional testing? Okay, so and uh, you know that information is something that the construction team needs in order to put their schedule together. Well, Facility Grid provides you with capabilities to uh, document that information so that it is now available to the entire project team and, and can be accessed just by going into the uh, duration uh, section of your, uh, of your functional test. Well, this one is not populated. I'm going to pick a different uh, piece of equipment. And uh, that would show um how much time i anticipated to allocate for a particular uh piece of equipment so for hu4 let's see if it, what it says okay so for the uh duration of the testing right i have two types of durations i have projected duration and so when i put my functional test together i'm going to indicate that the uh, i'm projecting uh you know to spend four hours on this testing Right? And as I perform each attempt of the test, I'm going to document the start of that attempt and then when I actually ended it, okay? So again, this information is available to every project participant. So anyone accessing Facility Grid can know exactly, uh, you know, what was projected for the test and how long it actually uh, takes. So let's uh, take a look now at uh, what you can use Facility Grid for to uh, encourage collaboration between the stakeholders. Again, uh, to provide the collaboration, 
you need to make sure that all information is available to uh, your project team at any point of time. Any any member of your team knows exactly where to find it, right? So, for example, once the commission team develops a commissioning plan and let's say uh, sends it out to all project participants, well, that email may be may have uh, arrived a, a year ago, right? Uh, where it, it, you know when the project participants need to find it again, well, you know it's really hard to do that uh, if it's stuck somewhere in the email, or maybe you've saved it somewhere in the network and you don't have access to it. Okay, so when you use a uh, commissioning software tool like Facility Grid, you can have all that information be stored in the document section of your uh, project. Okay, uh, the document section is arranged such that you can uh, save it, save documents uh, per disciplines, per specific categories, and all that th those documents, not only available on the cloud, they're also available on the mobile devices. Okay, so that means that, you know, if you do need to, uh, you know, maybe uh, open a, a commissioning plan or commissioning spec for reference to know exactly what the requirements are for specific testing, that information can be accessed uh, going into the documents library of your project. And every document and facility grid can be linked to uh, you know, any task or to you know, any other activity. Uh, meeting notes, for example, right? So typically commissioning team holds a, commission, calls a meeting, uh, puts together meeting notes and then sends out uh, meeting notes as part of the email, right? So again, the, that email can be lost. Um, you know, uh, uh, it's hard to uh, manage uh, the, the, you know, if you, if you work on a large project and you have tons of meetings, it's hard to manage all the, uh, uh, um, the meeting notes, you know, on a weekly basis. Uh, in Facility Grid, uh, you can document meetings as, as tasks. And then every time you perform a meeting, you can uh, save meeting notes under the uh, uh, associated subtask or a particular meeting, and that anyone uh, is looking for meeting notes can navigate, uh, you know, to the to this task and uh, find the meeting notes that would be attached to the task. Okay, or you can actually even document your meeting notes within the subtask if you wanted to. Not only that, you have access to these documents, right, at any point of time. And like I said, on the cloud and on a mobile device. Uh, you can also track the uh, status of those activities again. So if you know that part of your scope is to conduct 26 commission meetings, so you can uh, organize your subtasks related to, um, uh, you know, to those activities and then track status of each one of them. So at any point of time, anyone can come to this page and say, well, we know exactly which meetings took place, which meetings are still outstanding. Similar, uh, the, the software provides you with access to issues, uh, detailed overview of issues with uh, pictures and responses, and also site, uh, site observations, right? Now, uh, observations can be documented as part of site visits, can be documented um, uh, as part of any other activities, uh, any other on-site activities. So you may have a, a site visit report that just has to do with a you know, particular walkthrough through, through the uh, project, uh, or you know, maybe you are attending a uh, you know, file room testing, right? And as part of the file room testing, maybe you are uh, you know, documenting what's taking place uh, so you can document your observations you can document issues and get uh, you know document them uh, as as part of those uh, reports create those reports and again uh, uh, have all that information be available to any project participant so whether they use cloud uh, uh, based device or they use a mobile device all that information is available to them and the last uh, Option, not the, the last uh, uh, item to uh, to discuss in terms of the collaboration, and it kind of falls uh, um, to, uh, 
try you know to address the that finger pointing like I, like I mentioned in the beginning is to provide uh, pre-verification testing. So as I mentioned, uh, it, you know, from my experience, and I'm sure most of you experience this as well, a lot of times uh, the commission team gets to the job site and, uh, you know, after it's been told that the equipment is ready for testing, the uh, commission team shows up at the site and the equipment is not ready. Um, why, why does this happen? There is a lot of different reasons why, okay? It can be simply that the equipment uh, has not been properly uh, um, tested or, or, or pre-tested, um, and I'm referring to the static testing of the uh, of equipment. Maybe the sequence operation has not been verified. Uh, maybe it has not been. Uh, uh, maybe the uh, functional test uh, script has not been, uh, uh, you know, written per the latest updates to the sequence operations. Maybe the commissioning team was not you know, aware of the latest RFI that may have changed that, um, that sequence operation. Maybe the design team, when they put together uh, the design documents, didn't really uh, do their job to tailor a, uh, some sequence operation to specific project requirements. Maybe they just copied it from a previous project. Maybe, when the commission uh, or the construction team uh, put together the control submittal, maybe the controls contractor just did copy and paste of the design documents, uh, the uh, sequence operation, and didn't really spend time reading it and figuring out that, well, maybe it's actually not doable the way the design engineer put it together. Maybe the con uh, uh, controls contractor who actually did the programming on site uh, you know, read the sequence operation and said, well, I, I know uh, uh, what the uh, uh, the documents are calling for is actually not buildable or, you know, you can't actually program it that way. It doesn't work this way uh, and progs the, the way it's supposed to be programmed. Or maybe it's just because they uh, have done tons of projects for a particular client and know exactly what the client wants, right? So that they program it the way the client wants it, but the... Uh, um, actual functional test procedure that the commissioning engineer is planning on using doesn't match that sequence operation. So again, there's not a single party to blame most of the time. Anyone can be the reason that uh, uh, the systems or equipment are not ready for that testing and the testing ends up being failed. And then, uh, you know, then you start Everybody starts pointing fingers at, at at each at everyone, trying to figure out, you know, what's you know who's there to blame, why tests are failing, and the schedules are not being met. So, uh, what Facility Grid uh, enables our you know clients to do is pre-test equipment, and basically, uh, uh, when you create a functional test script in Facility Grid, we automatically create an identical copy of that uh, test. And we call it a pre-verification test. And so what happens is a pre-verification test. It's an uh, uh, it's you know it's pretty much the same thing as the functional test. It just has different permissions to access it. Okay. So as facility grid is a permissions-based software, we control who access can access what and uh, you know who can do uh, um, certain activities uh, per their uh, specific permissions. So, for example, when uh, a construction team member uh, logs in into facility grid, let's say controls contractor, they can open the functional test procedure and review it. And most of the time, if you look at your commissioning plan or commissioning spec, those documents will typically state that it is the responsibility of every uh, team member to actually look at those functional tests and provide review and provide comments. Most of the time, that unfortunately doesn't happen. So uh, the pre-verification tests have different set of permissions. So they allow the contractors to actually go in at the test and pre-test it. And when I when I mean what I mean by pre-testing is basically uh, you know go over the test procedure and you know try to uh, see whether whatever the uh, uh, intended uh, um, script for the testing is produced by the commissioning team can actually be implemented uh, on site. 
right? So again, hopefully this happens prior to the test. And like I said, because it is not always, or a lot of times it is not the fault of, let's say, controls contractor, maintaining contractor, or anyone else, why the test, uh, you know, fails, right? It is highly encouraged that actually the contractors do pretest the activities because when they do pretest, this is the best time to identify any potential issues with the test script. Again, they may have programmed that equipment correctly. The system is actually set up to work the way the uh, the design intent is, or maybe the way the client wants it to operate. But if it doesn't match the test script because they misaligned. The, the, there's always a potential for the failed test. So as the uh, project team goes through the testing and uh, you know responds to the questions and uh, you know provides any notes, what facility grid does is automatically automatically takes those responses from the pre-verification tests and incorporates them into the associated functional tests. So before going to the site, before going to the site, the commissioning team can simply uh, open the test that has been pre-tested and you know scroll through it and see okay what has been done has anything been pre-tested now uh, the that pre-testing will be indicated by the responses so if the uh, response were positive you know you would we would indicate that it's a pass uh, the grade is pass and if the response was uh, failed and the contractor actually identified why, for example, by stating that the sequence operation is not correct, that information would be embedded in the test script. So once the um, design, uh, uh, commissioning team uh, looks at this uh, functional test and can see that there is an issue that has been identified, so what they're going to do is most likely they're going to try to address this before actually going to the site and testing it. Okay, and by doing this, obviously they will uh, eliminate any unnecessary, uh, uh, you know, frustration with failed tests. They will eliminate, uh, uh, you, know, you know, any misunderstanding of how certain piece of equipment or system uh, needs to operate. Okay, and the best way to encourage this, and look, um, you know, it is obviously in better for everyone when you can find things like this before conducting the test. But the best way to encourage conducting these tests, in my opinion, is number one, is to include uh, the requirement for pre-verification testing in the commissioning specification, number one. Number two is to include it in the commissioning uh, plan. And not just to blatantly, uh, uh, to, to just state that all of the, uh, 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 equipment needs to be pre-tested. No, there is really no need. All you can, the best way to do it is just to uh, require pre-testing of, uh, you know, major uh, types of equipment, maybe single uh, instance of every major piece of equipment. Do you need to pre-test VV boxes? Maybe yes, maybe no. But do you want to pre-test the chiller or, an, you know, air handling unit? Yes, of course, why not? And again, the beneficiary of this is not just the commissioning team, but the beneficiary of this is every uh, member of the uh, commissioning team. So um, that completes the um, training portion of the webinar. And now we'll let's turn on to, uh, uh, to the questions. All right, Alex, thank you. Uh, we have one question. Uh, does the facility grid tracking status page show all tasks in one spot? Yeah, so we have a lot of uh, functionality in, ter in terms of uh, showing the progress of activities and uh, tasks and so on and so forth. So uh, on the overview page, on the overview page, as part of the uh, tasks section, we show all the activities related to tasks, the status of all activities, right? Now, uh, we facility grid provides you with different capabilities in terms of how much information you actually share with the project team and also uh, what information is actually being uh, tracked. And 
the uh, commissioning team or you know whoever holds facilitated license on a particular project this could be a building owner this could be the commissioning team or even the contractors they have uh, uh, access to the project settings where they can control whether this information is being shared with the team or not and also for every task when you set up every task in facility grid you can identify whether that task is being tracked in a percent report so for example uh, if i have this task equipment startup i can uh, you know when i create it or i can edit it uh, if I simply go to the edit mode, I can specify whether it is included in percent complete or not. So if I just uh, select this check mark, it will uh, uh, this particular activity will be tracked in that uh, report. And by the way, um, just a quick uh, note also, not only that you can track all of this and, and get to this information just by logging into the screen, you can produce reports. So um, if you go to uh, um, simply to the uh, overview page, uh, that's where I was. And uh, every every page that we show you, every information that we provide you with, status of tests or issues or tasks, you can simply click on this PDF icon at the upper right corner, and Facility Grid will generate that page with that report. Okay. And in addition to that, if you were to uh, um, uh, you know, generate a uh, custom report on a project, or if you want to create a uh, you know final commission report and include any of these charts, you could do that as well. Okay, Alex, thank you very much for the, answering that question, and thank you very much for the webinar. Uh, everybody out there, uh, thank you. This completes the webinar. Appreciate your time. Uh, be well and stay safe and um, hope to see you on Thursday. Take care and best.